welcome 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 hey y'all hey um for those who are watching this for the uh maybe the first time wherever you're watching this from let me introduce myself i'm dr samaria m colbert i am a licensed therapist with over 16 years um worth of experience i am a uh entrepreneur i have own a private practice located in greensball called kingdom creative counseling what else about me? I've written a lots of books. I've written over 60 books. My goal is 100 within the next five to 10 years. And um, God is good. So what makes me different is I excuse me, give you faith-based principles um, for lasting change. And I talk a lot of bit about um, all kinds of things as well on my YouTube channel that I tend to do outside of therapy. Uh, but today I want to talk to you about an interesting topic, and that is the spirit of divination versus the spirit of prophecy. Now, some of y'all may be like, wait, Miss Mary, you're a therapist. How does that work? Go with me here. Um, uh, while I was in prayer uh, concerning some things uh, a few weeks ago, believe it or not, the Lord uh, said to me that oftentimes Christians are deceived by the spirit of divination because when someone is the person who is operating in this spirit of divination, uh, it looks very much like prophecy. It looks really like word of knowledge and then prophecy. And so it is my intention here to throw my information into the head. I don't complain. Uh, <laughs> I do not um, claim to know everything there is to, about, uh, to know about certain things, but what God reveals to me, what I do know I teach. And I'm going to tell you how operating in the spirit of divination or really being in connecting uh, with someone with the spirit of divination, you're not going to hear uh, a real traditional therapist say this. It will uh, wreck with your uh, mental and your emotional health. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So let's pray because this is a heavy topic. And um, you will find that I'm kind of changing gears just a little bit. Uh, I am talking about like entrepreneurship and business and things like that. And I will continue to do that. And I decided um, to just be obedient, talk a little bit about this, but you'll find in the next other videos that I've already recorded, I'll kind of go back and start talking about entrepreneurship and things that you need. And it's all going to be worth. Remember there's uh, the diff there's really eight domains are our emotional wellness and your spiritual health is going to be one of them. I always uh, coined the term, I didn't coin the term, but I heard the term, the bio cycle, uh, spiritual approach that means your biological your psycho your mindset uh, and your spiritual and your uh, your medical and how that affects us okay and so there is a such thing as called spiritual warfare uh so holy spirit we so we thank you for today and we just ask that you open our ears and give us understanding um this is so important because unfortunately this is one of the spirits that many christians again become deceived by and that is the spirit of divination you will find and i mean this respectfully in the Christian church is that there are people actively right now in the Christian church who are operating under a spirit of divination. Someone can be operating under the spirit of divination, <laughs> excuse me, and still be putting on the end of their divination in the name of Jesus. God said, and when we talk about it from scripture, I'm going to give you some scripture. I'm not going to be able to really dissect it. Actually, the next book I just wrote, not that I just wrote, the next book that I just started writing uh, <laughs> is actually going to uh, uncover some of these hidden agendas of the enemy. But again, I'm not going to give you too much information because literally I just started page one two days ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so oftentimes people operate under this divination spirit. You will find themselves trying to connect with two true ministries and true prophets to validate their deceptive ministry. So you have to be careful who you come into contact with. Some people operate under the spirit of divination and they do not they do not know because one thing the Lord said to me uh, while I was in prayer, you can be, believe it or not, a Christian who loves God motivated by a different spirit. And you will find that people who are operating under the spirit of divination are operating uh, outside the realm of their authority. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. Y'all, y'all just I'm gonna make my I'm gonna make my case plain. I'm gonna make my case plain, right? <laughs> And so uh, we have to be aware because there's a sort of deception, according to Matthew 24, 24. When I do uh, do these types of things, uh, I do not give you my opinion. I give you what the word of God has to say. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 24, I'm going to read from the King James Version, which <clears throat> the other scriptures I'll give you, I'm going to read from the Living Bible. But this is the first one. For uh, there shall be a rise false Christ and false prophets, and they will shew great signs and wonders in so much if it were not possible, the very elect of God. 
And so it, what that means is that in the last days that people are going to be deceived because of signs of wonders. And if it were possible, we know anything is possible. People who are very elect, people who are mature in the things of God can be deceived by the spirit of divination. So therefore we got to be discerning of so many different things in the body of Christ and as a Christian, right? All right, so let's talk here. I'm going to uh, just read a few scriptures here. I actually had a cancellation. And so that's why I'm going to try to knock this out in less than 40 minutes. Jeremiah 14, 13th verse. God, listen to me, listen to me, does not, um, he does not like false prophecy. You can have good intentions and still be a false prophet. Because you are motivated. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself by selfish gain. You know, we prophesy because we want to build our ministry. We prophesy because we want to um, prophesy for money. It's a career move. Trying to get a new car. Jeremiah 14, New Living, uh, no, excuse me, Living Bible. <clears throat> and it reads, 13th verse. I'm going to put the, if you're watching via YouTube, I'm going to put these scriptures in the uh, description box below. And then I said, Oh Lord, their prophets are telling me. Okay. Let me read this again. And then I said, Jeremiah, who's I, Jeremiah said, Oh, he's saying to the Lord, Oh Lord God, their prophets are telling them all is well. No war or famine will come. They will tell the people you will surely send peace and then you will bless them. The Lord responded to Jeremiah, who was a true prophet. Then the Lord said, the prophets are telling lies in my name. I did not send them or tell them to speak or give them any message. They prophesy of visions and revelations they have never seen nor heard. They speak foolishness concocted out of their own lying hearts. The heart is deceitfully who can know it. 15, therefore the Lord says, I will punish these lying prophets who have spoken in my name and they did not send them, who say there shall be no war or famine. By war and famine, they shall die. So they were prophesying a good thing. The problem was, brothers and sisters, that they were not prophesying by the hand of God. Prophesied by the hand of God. They were prophesied by their own delusion. See, and I was, I was, I was hearing the Lord speak to me a few weeks. He said, Samaria, anybody can get up in front of a bunch of people and tell people what they want to hear. Anybody can do that. Of course, you're gonna be popular then. All right, let's talk about it. Jeremiah. And I'm not gonna give you all the scriptures. You got to just really. Do a search on uh, a false prophets, identifying false prophets, okay? Jeremiah 23, 16. Again, this is the New Living Bible. If you don't have a New Living Bible, just download BibleGateway.com. Um, download that app, and it'll give you all kinds of translations, okay? So on the 16th verse, Jeremiah again, this is my warning to my people, says the Lord. This is what the God is warning the people. Don't listen to these false prophets when they prophesy to you because they were filling you with futile hopes. That means hopes based upon a lie. It's sometimes it really is just better to tell people the truth. They are making up everything that say, they say. They don't speak for me. Verse 17, they keep saying to these rebels who despise me, don't worry. All is well. And to those who live the way they want to, listen, the Lord said, you shall have peace. But we know that's a lie. So live in no kind of way. And so the warning them, he said, no, you, you, you're fine. Everything's great. Verse 18, but you can name even one of these prophets who live close enough. But no, let me read it. But can you name? Even one of these prophets who lives close enough to God to hear what he is saying, has even one of them cared to even listen? 
So when you're motivated by selfish ambition, you begin to prophesy out of a need for validation. Mm. Come on, Jesus. Uh, see the Lord 19 is sending a furious whirlwind to sweep away these wicked men. It, it's better to not say what God didn't say. It's better not to prophesy because what happens is in the spirit of divination, which I will um, talk to you about in a minute, is someone is, is is using a familiar spirit. So they, and we call it in the Christian church, we call it the word of knowledge. A familiar spirit is just a lurking spirit. They can start calling stuff up out of you. Your name is green and, and God going to give you, they, they start, they can, they can generally see because the, the word of God said that the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. And so we get, we thought, oh my God, you know my first name. And you get to crying. And then they begin to prophesy what God didn't say. Just because someone can operate under a spiritual gift, you got to understand what spirit are they operating under. Let's go. I'm going to skip all around um, this one. Verse 24, can anyone hide from me? And I am not every way in all of heaven and the earth. Verse 24, listen. They say, listen to the dream I heard from God last night. And they proceed, listen, to lie in my name. How long will this continue, verse uh, 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 26? If they are prophets, this is what God says, if they really prophets, you are prophets of deceit, inventing everything they say. Verse 20, by telling these false dreams, they are trying to get my people to forget me in the same way their father did and turn their hearts and, and, uh, to idols. When someone's operating on a, div a divination spirit, they want to be worshipped. They are trying to manipulate God's people and manipulate God's people's emotions to hear what they want to hear. Now, I want you to be free from your from your suffering just as much as the next person. But if I start telling you about tomorrow, so you're going to be free. You got to tell you that you are a liar. I don't care how saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled you are. You are a liar. We'll skip all around. Uh, oh, let's go. Verse 20. Let these false prophets tell their dreams and let my true messengers faithfully proclaim, proclaim my words. There is a difference between the chaff and the wheat. That's a that's a that's a whole nother topic. A chaff and the wheat are basically the difference between uh sheep and wolves or, or wolves and sheep's clothes. It's basically, the true Christians versus the most of the fake ones, those who are true prophets versus the fake. If you look up, they grow up the same, they look the same, right? Uh watch this. So verse 31. I'm I'm gonna uh skip all around. So I stand against these these prophets who get their messages. Watch this from each other. These smooth tongue prophets who say this message is from God. So remember, I said at the beginning, when someone's operating in the spirit of definition, they put a God said on the front or behind of their message to valid. Now, if God really said it, that's that's perfectly fine. But sometimes your thoughts said it, your ambition said it, <laughs> your manipulation said it. Okay, <laughs> it's not God saying it. But they put God said to validate this. And oftentimes people who are not mature and things got maybe you're a new Christian, maybe you're new to the works of the spirit and you don't have never been raised around them. When someone starts calling you out and, and prophesying things about you that you don't, you can't filter it because you don't, you can't discern whether or not this is a true person from God. Okay. Uh, they are made up of dreams or fragrant life, verse two, and they lead people into sin. I did not send them, have no message at all for these people, says the Lord. Uh, verse 33, when one of the people, when one of the people or one of their prophets or priests asks you, well, Jeremiah, what is the sad news from the Lord today? You shall reply, what sad news? You are the sad news for the Lord has cast you away. And again, I want you to read Jeremiah 23, starting at the ninth verse and then all the way down uh, on your own time. I don't have time to do it. So uh, well, let me tell you kind of the context by which God was giving uh, Jeremiah this word. What was happening was Jeremiah was a true prophet. And God was giving him words are true, but they weren't necessarily flesh pleasing. Like he was saying, you're going to go into captivity, uh, captivity for 70 years, unpack your bags, uh, and read, read Jeremiah 26, 27, 28, all the way to 29. So he was not prophesying a popular word. 
There were prophets that were more known that were coming behind him. They were prophesying in two years, the trouble is going to be over. It's going to be fine. And Jeremiah was always having this contentious relationship because he was prophesying a word from God, but it wasn't popular because it wasn't telling people what they want to hear. Right. But it was from God. But they were saying my message is from God. And they'll put it thus said the Lord, but they didn't hear from God. They heard from their ambition. They were trying to uh, start that prophetic ministry. Okay. And so there was this contention because Jeremiah was not popular. That's why some people refer to him as the weeping prophet because he was going through so much uh, accusations and, and and he was come he was being uh, 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 he had a lot of warfare against him because he was a true prophet of God. He was not telling people what they want to hear. And so when you talk about someone who's dealing with the spirit of divination, they are prophesying because they want to tell you what they what you want to hear. So what is prophecy? This is not a, a, a training on prophecy. I'm going to teach you about divination. Uh, <clears throat> Revelation 19.10. Revelation 19.10. You can read from any scripture. It's going to read the same way. It, read, it said the purpose. I'm reading from the New Living Bible. The purpose of all prophecy. Look at your neighbor. Say all. Some Samaria. Nope. All prophecy. And all I have is to show you and tell you about Jesus. Another, the King James Version says, of all prophecy is the witness of first Jesus Christ. It is not the witness of your stuff. It is not the witness of your suffering going to be over. It is not the witness of your new car. It's not the new uh, 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 prophecy of your new man or your new boo. That's not the purpose of prophecy. That does not, that does not mean that God does not want you to have things. Does not mean he's not going to prophesy you things and well. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I am saying if you're looking someone's prophecy and it's not bringing you back into closer relationship with God, but you're going to get you a house, you'll get you a car, you can get you a man, you can get you a hundred a million dollars. If it does not at some point lead you to a relationship or a witness to Jesus Christ, it is not prophecy by the hand of God. And the scripture that I want to emphasize, it says all prophecy, all even uh, and I would dare say the gifts of the spirit are meant to lead you to a closer relationship with God. It's not a popularity contest. It's not for you to launch your ministry or your mandate. It's not for money. Did you know uh, the prophets of Baal would prophesy for money? That means you could pay them on the back end to prophesy listen I'm about to get my Bible hold on I gotta do it hold on let me pause all right y'all we back <laughs> okay let's talk about uh read this on your own time I only got maybe a few more minutes Balaam Balaam was a false prophet who was contracted by the people of Israel's enemies to prophesy a word against the people of Israel for the sake of money. So when you have been contracted to prophesy for or against someone for the sake of money, just read it on your own time, Balak <laughs> and Balaam. Okay. And he wasn't able to do so. Watch this verse seven. Uh, 22 verse 7 and Balak messengers who were the elders of Moab and Midian set out with money to pay Balaam to pla to place a curse on Israel verse 12 but God told Balaam do not go with them you are not to curse these people for they are blessed so the point I make there's a whole lot that goes behind that I don't have time to really dissect that as I would like to but the purpose of Balaam was Balaam was a a, a false prophet and he began to, uh, and he was uh, collecting money for the sake of prophesying against the people of Israel. And I want to say this again, when you are contracted to prophesy for or against people for the sake of money, all right, uh, Jude chapter one, come on here. Let's, let's just, let's just go here. Jude chapter one. I keep, I'm, I'm a, all right, Samaria, hold on. I'm doing too much. <laughs> I'm writing a book right now, so pick it up. But I, I sometimes as I'm doing it, these scriptures just keep coming to me. Um, Jude chapter one. Let's go about the what are we gonna do? Let's start. Um, 
verse three, you tell them over there. I'm eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share. For now, I find I might write to you about something else. Jesus was warning them to defend the faith that God has entrusted you for all time to the holy people. Ungodly people, these are what false prophets are, have wormed their way into who churches, okay? They've gone, saying God's marvelous grace allows them to live immoral lives, uh, immoral lives, and the condemnation of these people recorded a long time ago. Again, so these are people that have warmed their way into churches with a deceptive spirit. And they are teaching and preaching and prophesying that it is okay that the marvelous grace of God gives you the ability to live however you want to live. Verse eight, they claim authority. They live immorally. They defy authority and they scoff at supernatural beings. But let's talk about why they do this. If you look at Jude chapter 10, uh, Jude chapter one, verse 10, um, verse 11. Okay. Verse 11, Jude chapter one, verse uh, 11, uh, the, Jude chapter one, verse 11. Yeah. What sorrow awaits them, watch this, for they follow in the footsteps of Cain, who killed his brother. Like Balaam, remember, I just said, well, Balaam in, in number 23, they, dece they deceive people, watch this, for money. Why do they deceive people? For money, selfish gain. The King James Version says for greed, selfish ambition. It's a career move. And like Korah, they were perished in their rebellion. Korah, again, so Korah, uh, that's a form of rebellion. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, <laughs> it's too much information, y'all. I, I don't, uh, this is too much information. It just keeps coming to me. Uh, for Korah was basically a group in the, New, the Old Testament that basically rebelled against Moses' authority. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not. Pick up, just follow me on social media. I'm going to break this all down in my next book because you. this is why I write books. It's just too much information. Okay, so let's talk about what is the spirit of divination? Watch this. Divination is the practice of seeking knowledge for the future by unknown supernatural means. Unknown, not the Holy Spirit, unknown. Okay, some people call this a familiar spirit or a spirit of error, right? A spirit of error. Um, and how do you notice why is this poor? Just because you can prophesy does not mean it's your time to do so. The Bible says, according to Romans chapter 11, 29, the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. So you can have a spiritual gift and it still not be trained, developed, or it's not time yet to begin to be released. This is why the process helps us to be trained you can have a gift, but you have to that that gift has to be matured so you can uh, get past that. Okay, you, again, and you can be a Christian motivated by a wrong spirit. You you know you have low. I know it sounds me. You have low self esteem, and you just need people to like you. Okay, again, I'm you know we're trying to uh, 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 birth ourselves out with the places and the spaces that God has not ordained. Or out of timing, or, or, or I pass God's authority. Okay, so now we're just going to do 10 signs um, that a person is experiencing the spirit of divination. One, uh, when someone is experiencing divination, they are operating under the spirit of one mind control. So they were they are lustful for power. They're lustful for control. And they do it through manipulation. So power, control, and manipulation. People who start on a div divination spirit are very flattering to you. Remember, what's the uh, what's the young lady? Um, the damsel in distress in the Bible. She began to declare positive things over the apostles and over the, uh, the, the, the apostles at that time. But she had a spirit of divination attached to you. So you, someone can have a spirit of divination and they're not saying necessarily negative things. They're saying positive things, but it's a spirit that tries to connect itself. It's a python spirit that wants to suck the life uh, out of you. I got to say this again. Someone who's lustful for power, someone who is manipulated through control, uh, who is trying to control you through the vein of manipulation. So when someone says, listen, uh, um, the Lord said, uh, you are my spouse. And if and I say it, and because God told me, if God told you I was your spouse, he would have told me the same thing. 
And they put a God said because they're trying to control you. God said, if you don't give me this X amount of money or whatever by this amount of time, you go and they begin to speak word curses. And that's how you know when you're dealing with someone who's operating under the spirit of divination. They begin to declare, if you don't do their agenda, what they want you to do, they begin to speak word curses over your life. Okay? Um, but again, they start being very, very flattery. And this is why uh, oftentimes Christians get deceived by the spirit because uh, sometimes they promise an end to suffering uh, and they're very flattery. They can start calling out uh, the last four digits on your on your cell phone and, and you live on, on Green Street and the Lord and we just, oh my God. Just because someone is prophesying or, 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 or call the numbers and all that does not mean they're prophesying by the hand of God, right? Again, hidden agendas. If you're prophesying with a with a motive behind, if it's not to bring others to Christ, if it's to bring others to you, that is how someone is operating under the spirit of divination. Another thing is a spirit of contentiousness. The Bible wants us to be on one accord. And so your Holy Spirit is not coming against my Holy Spirit if we both live by the same Holy Spirit. So you'll find that when someone's operating under the spirit of, 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 of divination, even if they're saying a God said there's an atmosphere that's attached to it, and you don't feel laid closer to God, you almost feel this sense of tension within the room. They are contentious. They're people motivated by, uh, by again, think of the word divination, divide. Not bringing us together, dividing us. Competition. Manipulation, right? Okay, let's keep it going here. People, you always have to uh, inspect someone's fruit. Don't just look at their gift. What is their fruit? What have they produced? Um, someone who outside of their spiritual gifts is a jealous person, an envious person, and they are full of strife. These are people that constantly focus on who doesn't like them, who they feel is coming against them. They have a spirit of jealousy. They think everyone is against them, coming against them, jealous of them, and somehow doing something against them. Now, don't get me wrong. You will have people in life who are jealous and envious of you. That is uh, that is going to happen in life. But when you are really led by the spirit of God, that's not your primary focus. You're not overly consumed. Like I, you know, and I've, I've, I've been not transparent. I've been telling people, I had people come against me that were jealous of me, but I'm not walking around being paranoid and, and thinking everybody that say something about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it really ain't that serious. <laughs> but do you think if, if people don't accept me they don't like me they're just jealous of me no everybody ain't jealous of you sometimes uh you, you have a a very wrathful spirit people are not jealous of you they just can't deal with you sometimes you're just out of order and we can see it just because someone rejects you does not mean they're jealous of you sometimes you just don't belong okay we talked about being prophesying for money and selfish gain, and jealousy, and envy. You know, the uh, the sons of Sceva, those who know those sons of Sceva were in the Bible, and they started, they wanted to start their own itinerant ministry. They end up uh, trying to uh, lay hands on folks, and they said, uh, and they got in a bunch of trouble, basically. The demon said, Paul, I know, <laughs> but who are you? And uh, they were, uh, they got uh, attacked by all these demons. And but if you read the scripture very carefully, one of the things that the they begin to do was they um the sons keep did was they begin to see the fame and the notoriety of Apostle Paul. And they said, Got it, I can do it. And they 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 end up regretting it. So when someone operates under the spirit of divination, they see they are attracted to the power that you're operating under, and they either they want to see if they could take it, snatch it, pay for it. They want to do what you can do. But you were, remember the Bible says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You are anointed by the power of God, by the spirit of God to do his work and his ministry. People who have a spirit of divination are not anointed to do uh, his work. This is why when you see a true prophet come on the scene, and versus someone operates on that spirit of divination, the true prophet's uh, anointing is always going to be thousands times greater than someone operates on the spirit of divination. 
It's not that people have a divination spirit don't have any type of a power. They're not prophesying by the hand of God. It's by, again, a familiar spirit, spirit of error, spirit of divination. Okay. Other thing is that um, there is a thing called the doctrine of demons. So someone could be uh, operating very strongly under what we a spirit of divination, but they don't have a strong stance against sin. They don't, they are all, they are uh, um, kind of uh, uh, infiltrating uh, your organizations and things with a false doctrine. The Bible talks about how, okay, I got, but a few more minutes, y'all. I got another session. But again, follow me on social media because I am going to break this down in my next book. Um, the Church of Laodicea, I believe it is. Let me see. Did I got this right? Watch this. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, not, not the that church. The Church of Thyatira. I, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I know. It. Just don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to get it together. <laughs> Revelations chapter 2. Uh, verse 19 i know all the things you do i've seen this new uh, new living translation i know all the things you do says the lord i sing your love your faith your service and your patience enduring i can see your constant improvement of all these things so god is saying to this particular church one you are a church you love you are full of faith you're fully serving your community and you are patiently enduring painful situations but guys listen i got i got an issue with you What's the issue, Lord? Uh, but this, I have a complaint against you. You are permitting that woman who calls herself a prophet. You got to be careful calling yourself stuff. Who lead my servants astray. So she starts calling herself a prophet and she leads her servants astray. She begins to teach a false doctrine against sin against idolatry watch this verse 21 i gave her time to repent but she does not i uh, but this she does not okay i gave her time to repent but she does not want to turn away from her immorality watch this you understand what I'm saying? so he's saying listen I, uh, uh, um, I, god has given this particular church uh some instructions here he said, you done, you, 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 you doing well, but this is an issue that you have allowed. Watch this. I, uh, this is, but I had this message for the rest of the church who have followed these false teachings, deeper truths, uh, as they call them depths of Satan. Actually, I will, I will ask nothing of you except watch this. So he was saying, you, you allow this woman who calls herself uh Jezebel, which is the spirit of divination to come and prophesy in your churches. She begins to speak, basically prophesy, teach and preach these doctrines of demons, uh, and accept that you hold tightly to what you have until I come. So all who victorious obey me to the very end. And once you obey me, then I will give you authority over all nations. They will rule the nations with the iron rod and smash clay pots. They will have the same authority I received from my father. So your father, your authority is going to come um, from God. Now, I want to clarify this. There's some people who not is, who can operate under the spirit of divination and they're not as extreme, extreme and teaching the doctrine of divinations, right? You can just be motivated by the wrong spirit and still be operating under the spirit of divination, but you're not necessarily going to that, to that extreme teaching the doctrine of demons. Okay, but it's still not of God. So another thing about the div divination, it does not lead you closer to a relationship with Christ. I, I've already explained that it does not lead you closer to him. It leads you uh, further away. And I told you what prophecy, what the, what, that's there are other things about prophecy but the basic definition is the witness or the ministry of Jesus Christ. It should bring you closer to a relationship with Christ. Uh, other people who are of uh, the spirit of divination, you will understand they are attracted to the power. They will be attracted to anything that's great, grand, and bigger than theirs. Um, but they're not willing to truly to, su to submit from a posture of their heart to Christ or the headship or the covering of the church. Okay. When they don't get what they want, they have a vagabond spirit and they'll go from place to place to place until somebody gives them a position. Okay? Another person who operates under divination spirit is those who are not well-versed in the Bible. You can prophesy, but you can't uh, uh, give us basic hermeneutics of the scripture. What does that mean? You basically can't, don't interpret, don't interpret, don't teach or interpret the scripture appropriately, but we want to prophesy. 
so your prophecy and the level of accuracy depends upon once your, your prayer life, your study life, and your relationship with Christ. So who operate on the spirit of divination, they don't pray accurate. They don't pray, I mean, obviously accurately. They don't pray regularly, but they pray these superficial prayers, God give me, but they cannot, uh, they don't have a meditation or study life. There's no depth to the scripture. As a matter of fact, scripture should is not the primary thing that they go by. They want to go by, they want to make prophecy the end all be all, but your 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 the interpretation of scripture is extremely off. Okay. Um, we said teaching false doctrines, uh, twisting scripture to mean what is not what it is not intended. Or say that scripture don't really mean that. Okay. I, re I can try to go past, but I remember, uh, again, according to the scripture, when Jesus was getting ready to be tempted of the enemy, the enemy tempted Jesus by using scripture. Jesus responded by using scripture appropriately. Someone who's made of, motivated by a spirit of divination can still even take scripture, but they twist it to mean something that it is not. We, I talked about you, this doctrine of grace, where they, um, they make it seem like, oh, if I just, I just, uh, my grace gives them the right to live however you want to live. So they twist scripture to mean what it is not intended to mean. Okay. They are hyper. This is another one. Y'all see this all the time. They are hyper focused on what other people are doing. They have a gatekeeping spirit. So someone operates on the spirit. See, uh, <laughs> it is not your mission, your mandate or your ministry <laughs> to keep constantly trying to expose other people. God sends you to do that. But every time something goes on, I was I, actually there was someone on uh, TikTok, a uh, is an, a, and I was just watching because I thought I thought it was pretty good at first. But he was a pastor. I don't know this person uh, uh, um, personally, so don't go, you know. And um, I was just following on TikTok, but it's like it started getting really weird because and I started I just unfollowed him because I don't digest stuff like that. But the individual, like he was taking other preachers and and again saying why this person was wrong, this person, this person is wrong. And like everything he posted on while wow, this person was a false prophet and they kept going, going on. And then they kept, and after a while, it's like, hmm, no, that's a spirit of divination. It really is because you are uh, constantly critical and analyzing someone else. That is not God. God does not cause the vision. He causes us to be unified and on one accord. And some of the stuff he was saying was, again, it was like hit or miss, on or off. And I don't watch stuff like that. I just didn't know when I started following him that that was kind of the gist. Because some of the things he was generally saying about just the word of general is really good. But after a while, every post is about a different minister. Everything's going on in the world. You got to have an interpretation, a sarcastic attitude, and some type of vendetta against someone else that you really don't even know. No, nah, that ain't God. This is the spirit of divination. Someone operates very strongly under that has a gatekeeping spirit. They think you gotta go, <laughs> everything you gotta do, gotta go past through them. And that is not um, the case. Okay. They are nasty in the name of the Lord. <laughs> this is the last one. No, it's not. I'm running out of time. They're nasty in the name of the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Remember the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, temperaments. Again, there is a no law. That's the Galatians 5. So even if you're operating strongly under a heavy anointing, obviously the difference between the office of prophet versus the gifting, you should still have one peace, love, long suffering, gentleness, faith. If you don't have, if it's if if your display of how you do things is completely opposite, you're you don't you're not kind, you're not long suffering, you don't have meekness, you know, you just nasty, <laughs> you have a nasty attitude. That's not a spirit of God, a spirit of divination. Other things, someone who operates under the spirit of divination, they need constant validation from people the lord spoke to me many moons ago uh, no 2019 2019 i have to remember that um and he said oftentimes people seek positions of prominence because it gives them a faulty sense of confidence so some people constantly need validation from other people so that's why they begin to prophesy off a spirit of divination is not based upon the ministry of reconciliation it's based upon the, the ministry of mess so if you're operating under the grace, right? God is still going to convict you of your sin. He is still going to tell you when you are wrong. In the spirit of love, grace, and brotherly kindness, he's going to do that. And it's meant to draw you back into closer relationship with him. 
The purpose in the ministry of the manna is to bring you back into alignment with Christ. It is not to condemn you. So if someone says, because you're sin, you are going to hell, that is the spirit of divination. The only thing that you cannot be forgiven for is if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So again, I have to anybody that's condemning anybody to hell or they keep bringing up stuff from their past. It doesn't matter what happened in your past. If you and God have already had a conversation and you've asked God to forgive you of your sin, you can't bring up what someone did 10, 15, 20 years ago and then say, because of this, you're going to hell because they have already had a conversation between them and God. So when someone is condemning somebody to hell, that's not God. God wants us to be reconciled back to right relation. And he's a true father. He's going to hold you accountable. Sometimes God speaks to us in a very stern way. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you, but stern is more like, don't do that. But it's still love. But it's meant to bring you back so that you begin to serve God. God does not want us to be able to be afraid of him. He wants to, to reverence him. And so when someone's trying to con condemn you to hell, remember the Holy Spirit convicts convicts us that and that only hell it means turn let's get this right let's get back on board it's not you going to you get what i'm saying when you're around someone has the spirit of heaven it's very uh a spirit of divination for a very long time you will start having uh, uh severe severe depression severe anxiety severe mental and emotional turmoil and inability to sleep you'll wake up at the night sweats and and, and demonic dreams and, 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 and all kinds of things. Uh, it's a spirit of heaviness. You can also, you can be around someone who has a spirit of divination so long that you, that you have, you meet the clinical definition of uh, major depressive disorder, clinical definition. Now, again, the average therapist is not going to tell you that, but if you're working with a spirit led therapist, they will be, and they understand uh, this, how the spirit world operates. Uh, they can still help you, but again, they're, they're, they're going to be able to help you to dissect and go to the root of the issue and where it came from. All mental illness, again, is not, uh, uh, uh obviously, um, it's, it's not a, a, a demon or not. Yeah, I, I don't want y'all to go to the extreme, but what I am saying is that there's some parts of you, if you can attach, uh, uh, the spirit of heaviness around when someone comes around, and that kind of thing, we know we can kind of dissect of uh, the symptom that what's going on to determine uh, what happened. Remember, prophecy, even warning prophecies, the person who's leading it is led by peace. Now, this is not the same as your excitement because if someone begin to prophesy you all these wonderful things <laughs> that get ready to happen, you'll naturally get excited and you'll get a superficial sense of peace. But even when God is warning us or correcting us, uh, I'm talking about the peace that surpasses all understanding. I've had so many times in my life where I felt like uh, I was just in my season of of development through 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 struggle, and God began to say, "I have you. I'm teaching you these things." And it doesn't mean the struggle itself went away, but when the Lord speaks, it 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 it, it brings you to a peace because His voice is peaceful. Someone operates under the spirit of divination; they're not peaceful. Someone operates in the spirit of divination is very always talking and they also sometimes can be very loud people because they're trying to convince you that they're true prophets when they're really not. Okay. Uh, people who have a spirit of divination operate under uh, gossip, smear campaigns. Um, they have a hidden agenda to uncover and expose people. He is without sin, cast the first stone. There is a biblical way to handle people who have fallen away into sin. And it's always again, to bring them back into reconciliation. Always. God never wants us to sit. Okay. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm really, really out of time. Um, how can I avoid this spirit? When ask God for discernment. Okay. Ask God for discernment of spirits. You have to have a steady life of your own, because again, when someone's operating under that spirit of divination, by the natural eye, you cannot see it. You can't. But when you are spending time with God, prayer, meditation on his word, you can discern your father's voice. My sheep know my voice and no other voice will they follow. John 10, 7 through 5, 15. And don't come into agreement with someone who has the spirit of divination. When you know, when God reveals, because he will, he'll God, you, it don't take long to discern people. It don't, don't take long to, uh, to discern people who operate under the spirit of a counterfeit. It does not take long. 
Uh, but you ha your ear has to be open if you have to want to obey God. That's another thing. You got to want to obey God because people with the spirit of divination, there, it's a learning spirit. It's a very seductive spirit. And there are different ways to seduce someone other than sexual. But it's a very luring spirit. And they, and they almost give you this kind of faulty sense of validation. So you got to want to be free from that thing. You really do. You got you to say, this, is, this ain't me, right? So don't come into agreement with that spirit. Uh, and don't engage in, on social media wars um, at all. Because that 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 spirit is 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 prominent. Prominent amongst people inside the church and outside the church today. It's prominent. It is prominent, right? And you don't have to be deceived. The Bible says the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. Again, follow me on social media. I'm writing a book. It'll be more than likely. I'm not a, a, a I'm a very, very quick writer, but just follow me because I will announce it and post it. I think it'll bless your whole life. Um, all right, y'all. I'm Dr. Samaria Colbert. You can visit my website, www.drsamariacolbert.com. You can also click the link there. It's for my other books. Uh, my trainings, all those things. But again, www.drsamaricobra.com. And then of course, uh, for those who are interested in counseling, if by chance you have come across someone who has operated under a spirit of divination, it is okay to go to therapy. My suggestion would be, this is where the line between traditional mental health therapists and those who have a faith orientation who understand the spirit world, you, may, you, you should really consider uh, going to a faith-based but clinical licensed therapist that's also faith-based, okay? Every Christian counselor is not necessarily Christian therapist, all right? And if you're in the state of North Carolina, glad to see you in office or telehealth sessions, www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. And of course, if you are in a different state, uh, you can get to my state <laughs> or just go to www.psychologistday.com and they will help you out. This, this is not sponsored, but they will also help you to find a therapist in your local area that fits what you need. God bless you. We'll be back in the day, another time of the banger, y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye.